Fatur Zerhuzin has been its lead manager since 1999. She joins us now from our Chicago newsroom, where she's based, to discuss her winning strategy and stock picks. Zura Tura, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. So, so first of all, let's talk about uh, the criteria that you use when you're looking for mid caps. Obviously, you have a size constraint, but what are some of the other criteria you look for? Okay, one theme that we are using is we like to buy companies, stock in companies that make their clients more efficient, that are sort of built into the strategies of their client. Uh, we also, you know, the companies are not doing well, only well in the United States, they're also doing very well internationally. So almost 50% of our holdings have 50% or more of their revenues coming from outside the United States. So that protects them to a certain degree geographically, even if the United States is not doing so well, they may do really well in Asia, for instance, or South America. And you think that um, what we've seen happen here in the U.S., uh, we've been talking a lot about the increasing pessimistic sentiment. Do you think that it, it's gone too far in that direction? Yes, I think definitely. Because even when, um, when Modex reported earnings a couple of weeks ago or 10 days ago, the CEO made a comment. He said he had never seen such a disconnect between what's going on in his company and what he reads in the headlines. You know, the newspaper coverage, and he also said it's very U.S. centric. Um, and they have, you know, 60% of their business more even internationally, and a lot of it is in Asia. And so they have done quite well. And it's one of our holdings, and it's one of our top 10 holdings. And looks attractive here. It has a multiple of probably 11, 12 times next year's earnings. I want to get to some of your other picks as well. Um, let's talk about Akamai Technologies for a moment here. Uh, this is a company that um, basically helps companies, helps other companies um, with their, their internet, their networking, um, their streaming, et cetera. Um, and this is a company that was recently hit pretty hard after it announced that its margins narrowed in the most recent quarter. Goldman Sachs actually out today saying you should buy the stock. You, I would assume, agree with that sentiment. Um, are the margins not a concern for you going forward, or what's the, well, what's the bullish case here? The, the margins, that was a short-term problem. They tried to do a really good job with the, you know, South African with the soccer games. And so they had um, invested in some extra capacity. And they, you know, and they made a comment they have to grow into that capacity. But revenues were up um, over 20%. And uh, so there was a slight decline in margins, not a big deal. Long term, you know, the, the stock looks really great, especially it dropped under 40 from 44. It dropped under, you know, 40, and we added two positions at that level. Today it's 41, 42. Uh, Tura, you also like Borg Warner. This stock uh, tends to trade, as you say, in sympathy with the auto stocks. Why is that appealing right now? Well, Borg Warner, and they just reported a quarter that was better than expected. Borg Warner is a supplier to the automobile companies. They're very focused on a few products that make the automobiles more energy efficient. And they again have now over 60%, 65% of their business overseas. They are doing extremely well also in Europe because the high-end European companies get exported to more and more to China. Right. So BMWs, there are more BMWs sold in China than in the United States, I believe. Well, well Tora, may, may I ask? Double digit. May I ask because you've had this stock for eight years, given what's been going on in the auto industry here in the United States. Uh, did, was there any hesitancy on on your part during what was going on, especially when two of the big three were? taken over by the U.S. government? Yeah, from time to time, you know, when the stock, of course, you know, it does impact them, but we know that it's not as big a deal as, as you know, most people maybe believe because they are more participating in the international markets. There was one incident a few years, years ago when Ford had to do a lot of restructuring, maybe it was three years ago, maybe four, and that was an, a quarter when they had to come out and say, we are going to disappoint, you know, with this quarter we can't make the estimates. And reluctantly, after a few conference calls with them, we added two positions. We were a little nervous. And between October and, 
in January when they reported the December quarter right. and raised the outlook, you know, there was a huge move from the low to the yeah. high in that stock. Yeah. Uh, Tura, I want to get to your last pick just so, so we get another in here. And this is Manpower, the staffing company. You know, this caught my eye because in the latest employment report, we learned that temporary workers had actually fallen by 6% in July. One month, yes, but uh, is this something that spells a little trouble for Manpower earnings-wise going forward? Um, I think that's very short term, and I believe that when they report, they should do reasonably well because again, what's really surprising, here's Manpower uh, headquartered in Milwaukee, and 80% of their revenues comes from outside the United States. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, in, in Eastern European countries, uh, you know, the companies making inroads in Italy, in Scandinavia, you know, and even in Asia now, they are also in China now, so, and they don't do only temporary, they're also in the right-sizing business. So in the right-sizing business, that was good for 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. and has very high margins, that business. Okay. Okay, Tura, unfortunately we're out of time. Tura Zerhusen, thank you so much though, for sharing some of your picks with us. Tura, uh, the Managing Director of Optimum Investment Advisors.